some of the most mysterious events in history were those that occurred in a place known as Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and areas surrounding it. The reasons why the occurrences were so strange were because the events involved a variety of phenomena during the same time period, not just one thing. From UFOs to men in black, and even a being known as the Mothman, it attracted a lot of attention. Now I have a couple of uh, accounts here that I found compiled on a website. I will have a link to this website and all my other sources in the description. These are the set of first encounters with the Mothman. These encounters occurred in the mid 60s. David and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallet, a pair of young married couples were traveling together in the Scarberry car one night as they passed a World War II TNT factory called the West Virginia Ordnance Works, they noticed two red lights by the factory gate of an old generator plant. More closely, their location was about seven miles north of Point Pleasant and they were within the boundaries of a 2,500 acre area known as the McClintic Wildlife Station. When the Scarberries and Mallets spotted the red lights, they stopped the car, then quickly guessed that the lights were the eyes of some large animal. These eyes glowed. Roger Scarberry later reported that the animal was shaped like a man, but bigger, maybe six and a half or seven feet tall, with big wings folded across its back. At the time, the four individuals in the Scarberry car were all terrified, so the driver drove the vehicle along Route 62 with a strange oversized but man-like creature in apparent pursuit. While the car sometimes reached speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour, the driver continued to speed along with the winged creature following closely until the car almost reached the city limits of Point Pleasant. Then it vanished. The couples were so shaken they drove immediately to the Madison County Courthouse and reported this terrifying incident to Deputy Millard Halsted. The deputy took the young adults and the story of their experience very seriously as he had never known any of the individuals to be troublemakers before. Also, the state of fear the two couples exhibited showed Halsted that their fears and shared experience was legitimate even if the episode could not be reasonably explained at the time. Halsted had the Scarberry and Mallet couples turn their vehicle around and drive back to the site where they first noticed the red eyes. Halsted followed the Scarberry vehicle and nosed around the site of the out of service OTNT factory, but found nothing amiss and no trace of the creature. Aside from the widely publicized accounts which circulated quickly about the Scarberry slash Mallet Mothman sightings, Newell Partridge had an experience with a set of strange glowing red lights in his fields near Salem. This event occurred more than 100 miles northward of Point Pleasant. Partridge's dog Bandit disappeared on the night in question and was never seen again. The dog's behavior that night was described as strange, Bandit was acting up. No explanations exist to this day about what happened to Bandit after the shepherd dog dashed out into the field. Weeks later, after the freaky incident, Partridge would tell friends and family quite often that he would not be surprised to someday find the body of Bandit expired somewhere nearby. Partridge attempted some searches for his trusted companion several times in the weeks following the sightings of the lights, but he never found Bandit. No signs of Bandit ever turned up. The sightings of the so-called Mothman were not the only things that happened. Lights had been spotted around the skies of that particular TNT plant and cars would stall along the road without any explanation. There were even reported cases of poltergeists. Locked doors would open and close sporadically, and there would be strange sounds within houses, as well as voices that were not explainable. But the weirdness of it all did not stop there. There was a reporter named Mary Heyer, 
who was the Point Pleasant correspondent for the Athens-Ohio newspaper The Messenger. She wrote a lot about these local sightings. After one very strange weekend, she had over 500 phone calls from people who said that they saw strange lights and strange things in the sky. During one night in January 1967, she was working late in her office in the county courthouse and a man walked in the door. He was described as very short and had strange eyes that were covered with thick glasses. He also had long black hair that was cut squarely like a bowl haircut. Higher said that he spoke in a low, halty voice, and he asked for directions to Welsh, West Virginia. She thought that he had some sort of speech impediment, and for some reason, he terrified her. She said that he kept getting closer and closer, and that his funny eyes were staring almost hypnotically. She was alarmed and scared. So she summoned the newspaper circulation manager to her office and they spoke to this person together. She said that at one point in the discussion, she answered the telephone when it rang and she noticed the little man pick up a pen from her desk. He looked at it in amazement as if he had never seen a pen before. Then he grabbed the pen, laughed loudly, and ran out of the building. A couple of weeks went by and then Hire was crossing the street near her office when she saw that same man. He appeared surprised when he realized she was watching, and so he turned away and ran for a large black car that suddenly came around the corner. The little man climbed in, and it quickly drove away. Now, all of this seemed to end when at about 5 o'clock on the evening of December 15th, 1967, the 700-foot bridge linking Point Pleasant to Ohio suddenly collapsed while filled with rush hour traffic. Dozens of vehicles fell into the Ohio River and 46 people were killed. Mary Heyer described that during the Christmas week, a short man entered her office. He was dressed in a black suit with a black tie. He was not interested in the bridge disaster, she said, but he wanted to know about the local UFO sightings. Hire was too busy to speak with him, and she handed him a file of related press clippings instead. He was not interested in them, and he insisted on speaking with her. She finally dismissed him from her office. During that same night, an identically described man visited the home of several witnesses in the area who had reported seeing the lights in the sky. He made all of them very uneasy and uncomfortable. While claiming to be a reporter from Cambridge, Ohio, he inadvertently admitted that he did not know where Columbus, Ohio was, even though the two towns are just a few miles apart. In West Virginia, there is now a plaque adorning the base of a statue. On this plaque, it says, on a chilly November night in 1966, two young couples drove into the TNT area north of Point Pleasant, West Virginia when they realized they were not alone. What they saw that night has evolved into one of the great mysteries of all time. Hence, the Mothman legacy began. It has grown into a phenomenon known all over the world by millions of curious people asking questions. What really happened? What did these people see? Has it been seen since? It still sparks the world's curiosity. The mystery behind Point Pleasant, West Virginia's Mothman. Yeah!